fell into a trap that we call a trap of the unwritten rule. Now, what's an unwritten rule? Unwritten rules exist everywhere. Basically, unwritten rules are mindsets, habits, and patterns of thought that all of us have that define how we live. So what we've been able to identify over time is actually seven unwritten rules that students accept as reality, that define how they work and how they lead on campus. Today, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through and look at how do you build a culture of leadership and how do you break these unwritten rules. Uh, the first one, really, we just talked a little bit about is called the unwritten rule of possibility or the unwritten rule of capability. Almost every student that I've ever talked with, when you talk to them about ideas, the very first thing that comes to their mind is, is it possible or is it impossible? Can I do it? Can I not do it? Uh, the challenge that this offers is that whatever definition they come up with in their mind, whatever way they decide to answer those questions, will define the resources that they're willing to apply and the effort that they're willing to put into it. Almost always, extraordinary experiences like this start when one person looks at something like this and says, what if and why not? So one of the most significant things that you can do when you talk to students, when you're trying to help them build their leadership skills, is to simply ask one question. And the question is this, why not try? Hopefully your students will bring this back because I'm going to tell them you know, a phrase that I'm encouraging them to adopt. Has anybody in here ever heard this? What would you try if you knew you couldn't fail? How many of you have heard this in some form or another? It's something that we like to, to talk about. I'm going to ask them to think differently. I'm going to ask you to think differently, and that's this. What is worth trying even if you know you might fail? So one of the things that is a reality about leadership is that we are judged as leaders by what we do and the performance that we have. So when I talk with students and I look at groups and I say, are you trying to develop student leaders or are you trying to develop student followers? Almost always people look at me and go, student leaders, but here's the problem. How many of you in here have ever talked with students or seen students on your campus that are basically told, you need to do it the way we've always done it? Let me give you another unwritten rule. Another unwritten rule is actually an unwritten rule that exists within groups. One of the, the realities, we call this the unwritten rule, or one of the unwritten rules of communi uh, community, is this. We like to hang out with people that we like to hang out with. And the difficulty is, is that if they're going to be a leader, they need to become master networkers. What that translates to is that in some way, they need to become good at building relationships with other people. We're going to do a quick experiment. Here's what I want you to do. When I say go, I want you to stand up and find someone in the room that you don't know. See if you can find something that you have in common with them. Now, don't cheat on me. Kids are notorious for this. I've actually had students do this. They go up, they go like this. Hi, I'm Mike. I've got a right arm. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice you have one also. <laughs> we have something in common. That's not what I'm talking about. And please don't go up to somebody and go like this. So, are you familiar with Round Square? <laughs> me too. What I want you to do is see if you can find a like, a dislike, an interest. Something you've done that they've done. And if you would, Keep track of how many questions you have to ask before you find that something in common. You've got 60 seconds. Stand up, meet somebody new. Go, do this fast as you can. How many of you in here were able to find something in common in roughly Six questions or less. Let me see a show of hands. One question. I have no idea why this works. Psychologists say you can literally go up to almost anybody and find something in common in roughly six questions. Now, why do students not do this? Everybody grab a seat. What happens is that they look at people and they judge people based on looks and appearance. There are three things that are holding your school back right now from having a great leadership program. The first one is time. Let me tell you the second barrier. The second barrier is money. But the most challenging part that you're going to have 
is you're going to have to figure out a way to break through the unwritten rules or the culture exists at your school.